Hey everyone, it's Sam Ovens here and I wanted to create this quick video uh, just to show you about this personality tool, uh, personality test that I use and that I've shown uh, thousands of other people to use. And I believe it really can uh, help you change your life for the better. And it's really powerful, especially for entrepreneurs, because it reveals to you what your weaknesses and what your strengths are. And once you know those, you know, you can understand yourself a lot, a lot better, which is very helpful in business because you know, you know, the, the areas you need to watch out for, the areas where you need to, you know, get other people to help you with and all of that. So the title of this video and post is how the Myers-Briggs personality test can change your life. So first of all, what is the Myers-Briggs test? Well, very simple. It's just a personality test and it just shows you what side of the spectrum your personality is. Uh, your personality is and uh, I've given you a link here you can do the test for free so just type into your browser consulting.com forward slash MBTI so uh, what I want you to do is just go and do this test now just pause this video right now go to consulting.com forward slash MBTI do the test it's totally free to do and you can do it in about five to ten minutes and then you'll get your results boom and then as soon as you've got your results, come back here and uh, continue playing the video and I'll explain, you know, what your results mean and, you know, things you should watch out for and I'll explain what personality type I am and what I've learned from that and all of that good stuff. But I don't want to go and tell you all about all of that before you do the test. So just pause the video right now, go to consulting.com forward slash MBTI and when you go to that URL, it'll look like this. Just go there and complete this test. All right. So pause the video right now. Go there. Do the test. All right. Now I'm assuming you've done the test, which is awesome. And so now let's explain it. So first of all, you should have a four letter result like ENTP or ENFJ or ESTJ or something like that. Right. You should have a four letter result. I want you to write that down right now. And then what I want you to do is, first of all, just read about your personality type. So your personality type, uh, once you've found it out, you can go personality types. And here's all of them here on this website. And it's 16personalities.com. You can read about the personality types and you can find your one here. So let's say that you're a, um, let's say you're an... ENTP, right? Well, you can click here and you can read all about the ENTP personality types. It'll give you an intro it'll give you an introduction, strengths and weaknesses and all of that good stuff. So, the first thing I want you to do is read up on the website about your personality type. And this is pretty cool to do cuz you know, most of the time when people do this, they're like, "Whoa, this is spooky. Like this test knows me really well." So, first of all, go and do that. And then uh, the next thing I want to do is really just explain how, you know, the personality test works. So uh, it basically it basically scores you on uh, on each side of the spectrum for four different criteria. Now, the first criteria is intro is introverted or extroverted. So, you know, are you quiet and reserved and like to keep to yourself and inside your own head and like to be alone? Or are you extroverted and do you like to be loud and outgoing and social and all of that? So if you're an I, that means introverted. If you're an E, that means extroverted, right? That's the first criteria, I or E. The next one will be N or S. And if you're on the N side, it means that you're intuitive and random and you like no rules and no structure. And if you're on the S side, it means that you like structure, predictability and rules. And then there's F for T. F, F is feeling and, you know, you, you make a lot of decisions with your feelings and your emotions. And then T is more cold, rational logic and thinking. And then the final criteria is P or J, perceiving or judging. And judging is, you know, really decisive, action-oriented, wants to make a to-do list and then just smash through it. And then P is perceiving and indecisive and always open to new information and always wanting to change the rules and change this around and you know divert off onto this tangent and then this tangent and likes to kind of float around a bit more 
So those are the, that's the test and it's very simple because you know, you'll either get one or the other of these letters. So you could be an E N T J, right? Or you could be an I N F J and that will tell you what it is. Now let's talk about how, you know, this is useful in business. If you're wanting to start your own business or if you're already an entrepreneur with an existing business, let me tell you how this can totally change the game for you. So what you want to do is, you know, first of all, say what type you are. Now I will put my type here just to make it simple for you. So I am an INTP, right? That's my type. So that means that I'm on the introverted side and then I'm on the intuitive side and then I'm on the thinking side and then I'm on the perceiving and indecisive side, right? So let me tell you how, you know, finding out my Myers-Briggs test was, was able to help me in business. Well, first of all, you know, I'm introverted. I'm on this side. Now, if you've got an, if you've got an I in your results, it doesn't matter what the rest of these letters are. If you've got an I, well, it means you're introverted and it means the hardest part of business and entrepreneurship for you is going to be just talking to people. It's just going to be putting yourself out there and, you know, making yourself known. And I remember when I first started my business, this absolutely was the biggest thing I had to battle with. You know, I was too afraid to, to make any phone calls. I was too afraid to sell anything. I was too afraid to put myself out there. And I just wanted to, you know, sit inside and read books and learn and, and do all the behind the scenes stuff without actually, you know, taking any action and exposing myself. And so if you've got an eye, well, in business, the, the biggest thing that's going to be uh, the biggest barrier you're going to face is this introvertedness. And just because you've got an eye, it doesn't mean that you're stuck like this forever. You know, people aren't born with a Myers-Briggs personality type. You know, this thing comes from nurturing, it comes from your environment, and it comes from, you know, how you've been brought up and all of that. You're not born with DNA that makes you like an INTP. It happens over time, and it's learned behavior, and you can unlearn this behavior too. That's what's most important to understand is that this isn't you and it's not set in stone. You can change this. So what I had to learn is how to really combat this I. I had to learn how to be more extroverted and more loud and more outgoing. And this was painful for me to do, but, you know, I was able to do it. And now I can kind of turn on a bit of an E personality. It's not natural for me. It's definitely not easy, but I can turn it on and I've learned to pull it out if I need to. But if I had never learned how to pull this out, I would have never gotten started. You know, I'd still be back home in my parents' garage and I wouldn't have made any money. So if you're an I, you need to learn, you know, to be more E. And if you're an E, well, you do need to learn to be a little bit more I. You know, this is the cool thing about this test is, you know, your, your weakness is going to be what you're not. It's also what your strength is. You know, people's strengths are also their weaknesses. And where introverts beat extroverts a lot is in the analysis and all of that. You know, introverted people are generally really good at analyzing things and, you know, staying inside in the quiet and figuring out solutions and thinking through things. While extroverted people just always want to be out talking to people and doing all of that. But, you know, in business, you've got to be both. You've got to be a chameleon. You can't just be one or the other. You know, sometimes you have to be inside doing analysis without talking to anyone for a few days. And for a social butterfly person, that's excruciating. But then sometimes you've got to be out and you've got to be pitching and presenting yourself and making sales happen and on the phone and meeting people in person. And that's when you need to be an E. And then the second one is N or S, intuitive or structure. Well, here, this part, having an N makes you really creative. You know, most musicians would be an N, and I don't think you would really find any artists or any musicians or any creative type people that have an S. That just won't happen. Because this is this intuitive random no rules thing is what makes people creative, and it's what makes people want to break the rules and try different things that haven't been done before and kind of go against the crowd. If you have an S, it means that you're, you know, you like going with the crowd more. You're more of a rules person. 
and rules people typically have jobs because what are we told from when we first are born and grow up like you know go to school go to college get a degree then get a job and then follow the work rules at the workplace and just work your way up the ladder so s type people are generally employees they're people who follow rules and like structure and they're typically they don't like it when things don't go to plan and they don't follow the rules now uh, most entrepreneurs are generally in and most uh, most people who are creative and everything are, are mostly in and that's good it's a good strength to have as an entrepreneur because it means you're going to think of new ideas and stuff like that but like I said a lot of the time strengths are also weaknesses now what you've got to watch out for if you're an N is you know following structure and um, predictability and rules like N type people can get into trouble with things like their accounting and their taxes and things like this whereas S type people keep that stuff under control now I'll give you an example of this with me you know I always want to create new stuff and I really don't want to follow structure and everything but because I'm aware of this about myself I put things in place so that I can follow this and when I feel the urge to you know create something new and break out of the the mold and the rules that I just set for myself the day before I remember that about myself I remember that I like to break the rules and do random things all the time and when I remember that and I'm aware of it I'm able to course correct and come back to it and so this is an important thing to understand you know if you keep creating new things every day and never stick to the thing which you set then you're always going to be creating in a circle you know it's like a snake that eats its own tail sure you're creative but you know creative people need to stick to something long enough to see it through and that's the weakness of the N personality type and a tip like if you're ever hiring someone for your company that's going to be responsible for routine type things never hire an N ever hire an S you know one of the biggest lessons I learned when hiring people is to get them to do these tests we get them we get out whenever we hire someone we get them to do about four different psychometric tests and this is one of them this is the main one here the Myers-Briggs test and for example if I'm hiring an HR manager you know someone who's going to be paying payroll make, uh, looking after sick leave making sure people have signed their uh, employment agreements and all of that stuff you know checks and balances type work that needs to be accurate it needs to follow structure and rules the last thing in the world I want is an N type person in that role because they're just going to want to create new stuff all the time and not stick to the structure and the rules and that's not what you want also you don't really want a bookkeeper or an accountant that is an N type person you also wouldn't want a lawyer that's kind of like that you would want someone who is on this S side of the spectrum and so in my company uh, you know we do have s type people and they're they're typically in the roles where things need to stay as they are and you know there needs to be checks and balances and they keep the s type people in my company kind of police the n type people and make sure that you know the the, the important things are getting done and that's something you can learn if you're an n type person and then the next one is F or T so if you're an F it means you're feeling and emotional or T you're thinking and logical now me I'm personally a thinking person it means that I discount feelings and emotions when I'm making decisions so you know when I feel an emotion and I feel scared or something like that I don't really think like oh there's something bad about that I shouldn't do it I just use pure logic and I discount the emotion entirely now this makes me a really good decision maker and T's are very good decision makers but where they can go wrong is you know they can hurt people's feelings and they they often uh, don't get along too well with the feeling type personalities and that's because you know the feeling type personalities they like to use their feelings to make decisions and they think their feelings are more important than you know the logic whereas thinkers think logic trumps feelings right now my wife is a feeler and you know I can really understand this well because you know she like when she comes to me with a problem she's I my first the first thing I think is solve problem 
right? Because I'm a thinker. Oh, she's my wife has come to me with a problem. She's upset because she has a problem. Therefore, if I fix this problem, she won't be upset, right? That's my thought process. But she doesn't want the problem to be solved. She just wants to be hugged, right? That's it. That's what feelers are like. And sometimes they don't just want the problem to be solved. They don't want a logical answer. They just want to be heard and they just want, you know, they just they just want their feelings to be expressed and heard and listened to. And so if you're a manager in a business or if you've got other people in your business, getting them to do this test and figuring out whether they're an F or a T is going to be very helpful. Also, if you're a feeler yourself, then you need to really understand that, you know, you need to have some thinking in your business. And you either need to learn to pursue this yourself and you have to grow this as a strength yourself. Otherwise, you need someone in your business that can balance you out with this thinking and logical and rational strength. Because in business, most people are T's instead of F's. And, you know, that doesn't mean that you can't be in business if you're an F, but it does mean that you need someone in your business to have this side for you because this side is really important in business. And then the final one, P or J, perceiving and indecisive or judging and decisive. So I'm personally perceiving and indecisive. Now, what I learned about this with myself is that I constantly want to uh, take in new information. Like I might have to make a decision and I'll go over all of the available information and then I'll make a decision. But then the next day I want to go over new information because I'm not quite sure if I want to stick with my original uh, my original decision. This is the danger of the P. This is the real danger of a P. But the J, the J just wants to make a decision and then boom, take action, implement it. All right. So J's are more action takers than P's. So if you're a P in business like me, you have to be very careful of, you know, just thinking about stuff and just just uh, taking in new information constantly and never really coming to a conviction and never really, you know, believing in your judgment and then just executing. Right. You just go around and around in a loop coming up with new information, new information. You're never taking action. But the J type is more they'll take in the information, make up their mind and then execute. So I've really had to become aware of this for myself and uh, put a lot of effort into growing this side of me. And so really, I, you know, it, to be successful, I've had to develop this side here, a J. I have a lot of this J now and I can turn it on when I need to. You know, I can take action in a big, big way when I need to. This is my natural state, but I can go here and I can turn it on and off Boom, like that. And same with the E. This part here. You know, I've learned to be able to turn that on and off as well. And same with this piece here. Now, I would say out of all of these, I've definitely learned how to do this. This was probably the most important one. I'll, I'll just put here uh, first. And why I'm putting first here is because this was the most important thing to learn for me. Because if you don't take action, nothing is ever going to happen, right? Then the second one would probably be this one up here. You know, I needed to learn how to be outgoing and extroverted. And then I would say the third one would have been this one here. Wait a sec. If I put in here, third. That was the third most important. And so what I want you to do, and to be honest, I really haven't mastered this one yet. I'm, I'm still working on it, and um, it, I definitely haven't mastered it yet. I still have difficulties with it. Um, but these ones are extremely important. The taking action one and the extroverted one. If you have a P in your results, or if you have an I, there is danger. I or P mean danger in entrepreneurship. And you need to watch out for those and you need to balance those things because otherwise you'll go nowhere. That's an important lesson in entrepreneurship. And, you know, really what you want to do is be aware of what type you are and what your weakness or strength is. 
and you need to learn to be able to balance that yourself. You need to be able to balance your strengths and weaknesses yourself. Or if you can't do that, you need to bring other people into your team and into your life to help you balance those things. Because all problems that are um, that come about in your life and in business, you'll probably notice that they come because of these different strengths and weaknesses in your Myers-Briggs personality test. So that's it for this quick video. I just wanted to show you what Myers-Briggs test is, uh, how to do it, how to get your results, how to really understand your results. And then I showed you my personal results and the things that I've learned from it and the things that I've had to put in place and implement to actually, you know, to actually make this Myers-Briggs test not just an analysis, but a tool to help me get better in business and in life. And I suggest that you guys watching this video today, you do the same thing. Don't just use it as a, an, an analysis of yourself right now and then be like, oh, I'm that. OK, let's move on. All right. Do the test, analyze it and then work on balancing these things so that you can improve your own life or your own business. Now, what I want you to do is if you're watching this video anywhere else other than the consulting.com blog, head over to consulting.com right now and check out the uh, check out the specific post. And if you've liked this post, you know, like it, share it and leave me something in the comments section below. You know, I'm going to read all of the comments personally and I'll reply back to anybody's questions if they have any. And then what I want you to do in those questions below is tell me what personality type you got. You know, I told you I got an INTP. Write in the comments, tell me what you got and then tell me if you know, this has been accurate of who you are and what your behavior is like. And if you've got any questions that you want to know to help you, you know, improve your business or life, just let me know in the questions below. And then finally, uh, just remember to subscribe to the consulting.com YouTube channel. If you want to see more videos like this, uh, subscribe because we release new videos every week. And I'm sure you're going to like them if you've liked this. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.